Good morning, folks. Eyes on the left side. We begin today by watching 48 hours of a massive plasma filament cresting into view. This phalanx of plasma will continue twisting in and become our star's primary eruption threat in just a matter of days. It has a sister prominence coming in on the north as well, half a day behind, and connecting down to the sun's surface as a solar tornado three Earth diameters tall. Looking at the last 24 hours and seeing some surface events, but nothing major, I'll ask you to remember that minor CME we mentioned yesterday, and now we can see it on SOHO. It's the burst heading south. And the question here is whether or not the northernmost portion of that shockwave could affect Earth. Well, the CME is very hard to see here on NOAA's Enlil Spiral. However, a close examination reveals a minor shock mostly missing Earth to the south, but with the turbulence imparted on the solar wind to the side of it, having a good chance to envelop the Earth. NASA seems to show little to no effect at all with the CME miss, according to their predictions. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we see solar flaring back down and quiet. We have three sunspot groups that we've been watching. The lead southern group was Delta class, but now is just Beta Gamma. The larger umbra behind it is still a loner down there, and the northern sunspot retains negative polarity domination with little mixing. No big flares are expected. Solar wind density in orange is two to five times as high as yesterday, and the extra pressure has set a touch of instability to Earth's magnetic shield. Previous corona holes departing on the right, next ones coming in on the left. We are between corona holes right now, and there's no significant planetary geometry, which means that the 6.0 in the North Atlantic yesterday was likely not space weather driven, just regular old pressure release. Top news today includes elation in India as this river runs for the first time in 20 years, and it's not a trickle. That is very good news for them. We've also got an article on the urban heat island effect on climate. Tough topic. The Weather Channel has put out October, November, and December's temperature predictions for the United States, and they've also have the December to February forecast, but with the caveat that when a polar vortex or other cold event hits, it could be even worse than previous years. Website members, today's episode of Fly on the Wall will post in a few hours. We'll discuss the new Pluto shots, some opinions on other news, and the Chile earthquake and tsunami. And because of that last topic, I'd recommend you watch the latest Deeper Look episode to learn how to read solar wind speed charts so that you can gauge solar polar field earthquake factors. Less than a month to observing the frontier, Saturday and Sunday, October 17th and 18th in downtown Pittsburgh. If you thought mobile observatory project events were fun, this will be better. Tickets at suspiciousobservers.org. The Midwest U.S. saw major rainfall and storms off the convergence line cutting through the states, and they will persist tonight up to that Great Lakes low. Tonight, the storms could reach Pennsylvania. In Europe, we're getting reports of record rainfall in parts of Italy. Insane totals over just a few hours. And when we come over to the wind map, you're going to see two lows in the north. The one over Scandinavia is aiding Mediterranean moisture sucking up over the continent with its convergence line. It's going to be a lighter day down under. Weather shares in the comments, please, if you do get inclement weather here. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.